Pink Tuesdays with Paula. Hi, Miss Jackie. How are you? Uh, we'll let a few people get on and then we'll get started. We're going to talk about um, outline products for your glass, your fused glass tonight, because uh, I know there's still some confusion on what you can or can't do, what you should use, and it's just a personal preference, but we'll go over some of those. I'll show you some examples and uh, then you can ask any questions that you might have. Okay, so we're going to let a few people get on. Um, I don't look very good today. I've been out in the wind. <laughs> and working hard. So just wanted to jump on and do this real quick. Good evening, Jody. Thanks for joining me. So if you're on, be sure and comment, uh, say hello, tell me where you're from. Uh, we will draw or Jenny will spin for a couple of prizes at the end, a couple of technique sheets at the end. Good evening, Brenda, Donna, Diane. Awesome. So we've got a few people on. So what I'm going to do is uh, switch to my overhead camera and we will get started. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think one of the big, we do have a private Facebook group. I want to just reiterate that each time we have a lot of new people that are joining us. So if you bought some of our glass products, we have the CFE Glass Color Artist is the private Facebook group. There are questions that you need to answer in order to be able to get on that group. Okay, if you don't answer the questions, then you're not going to get on there. If you're watching on Facebook, don't forget I have a YouTube channel, Paula McCoy. It has the logo there. Be sure and uh, join, subscribe, and then click the bell to get notifications when we go live. Okay, so I put out that little reminder. You can also click on that and uh, get a reminder from that. It'll tell you 15, 20 minutes ahead of time. Another one of the big things is when you're uh, asking a question, uh, either on my page or on the closed group, the glass group, is tell me these things. What COE are you using? How many layers? Uh, the order that you stacked them, if that pertains to it. Did you paint on the top, the bottom, et cetera? Did you cap it? So these are basic. What was your schedule? Tell me the exact products because some of our product names have, some of the products have the same name. So like a color concentrate may have the same name as an enamel. So be sure and you know, specify exactly which products, preferably with the product number like G310 or is it CC1? Uh, 12, whatever it might be. And then tell me what your application was. Are you brushing, puddling? Um, are you airbrushing? Those different types of methods. Okay. So what I want to show you are, are some different outline. And I'm going to zoom in on this. Whoops, wrong direction. Can you hear me okay, everyone? Is that coming through? Good, Jenny. Hey, it's Robin, Sandy, Nancy, howdy. Okay, so, and I know I have a little bit of a glare, and what I'm going to do is put this, uh, let's do this. So we have what's called outline uh, black and white, okay? So these are a matte surface when they fire, and I think you can kind of see that when I tilt it. It's very matte, and you can see that that's gray in color. It's not really a black. That is the GO331 on top. So this is two pieces of glass fused together. And I just used, and I'm going to demonstrate this also. Okay. So when you do the outline black, which comes in a little one ounce and two ounce, and you can buy it in eight ounce also, the caps and tips fit on here, which is what I've done here. I've just put one of our piping caps on it. So this is a pre-liquid. You don't, if you have to thin it with anything, use your GM 300 glass medium. Okay. And I know we have a bunch of new people from the ceramic and clay world. <coughs> Excuse me. So be sure you understand what I'm talking about. The GM 300 is glass medium. It is not gloss medium. Okay. There is a difference. Okay. So this is ceramic. This is glass. Okay. So very close. 
So don't get that confused when you're ordering. Make sure you're ordering the right product. If you have trouble when you're ordering, just message me and I'll help you with that, okay? But if you have to thin it, thin it with your glass medium or distilled water. Either one will work, okay? Hey, Miss Deb. Hey, Patty. Okay, you can hear me great. Now, another thing that I want to show you here is the outline black. If you cap it, capping means you put a piece of glass on top of it. It bubbles really, really bad. Okay, this is on top. This is in between. So that's a whole nother technique. I need to come up with a technique to use that method. But do you see how bad it bubbles? It's really super, super bad. So you don't ever want to put it between glass. Now you can fire this and then put a piece of glass over the top of it and you're fine. Once you get rid of uh, the binders, then it's okay. The binders is what causes it to bubble. Okay, now the white does not bubble between glass. And I know it's hard to see white on white. Okay, but I did put it between and it did not bubble. Now I would not recommend that. I'd still only use it on the top and then wait until you fired that and then come back and cap it with either sifting clear over it or putting another piece of glass over the top. So does that make sense? So the GOs do not cap these. Do not cap them. I know that lights so had a little bit of a glare. Any questions? Miss Jenny. Jenny's in the background. You guys can't hear or see her, uh, but she is talking to me in my ear, so to speak. So, no? No. Okay. So, then we also have a product called piping paste, which comes in a four-ounce jar. The piping paste, then you put into one of our piping bottles with our caps and tips okay so this is just what it says a paste really thick and when you use it and you put it in your bottle make sure you use your uh, tool and scrape down the sides as much as possible because this hard stuff on the side will not reconstitute it'll get clogged in your tips in your piping tips and i always put a date on mine when i opened it and technically if you put a piece of saran um, over this and then put your lid on and then even put it in a Ziploc bag. It's going to stay longer because you think that it's nice and tight, but air can get in there and it's going to dry it out. Okay. So here are those examples. Now I've done some of the brush embroidery with it, but it creates an outline on this piece here. Let me hold it up so you can see it. So I outlined with the white and then I flooded in the different colors, whether it was bubble art, regular enamel. And I don't, you can't see it on the back because these came off of my board. Or you can just do a solid line or you can do the brushwork with it. This would be a low fire product if you were going to use it over the top of, say, your uh, ceramic glazes that have been fired and you wanted to do some of this, you could. It would go back to an 015, 016. And this is your black. Okay, same difference. So can you see the difference? You can determine which one you'd like, white outline or a black outline. Really depends on your design. Black doesn't show up as much. The white does show. So if you were doing like a poinsettia, which I've done with the white uh, paste, that's really nice to be able to do that. Okay. Hey, Mr. Den, thanks for joining us. Okay. Um, you can also tint the white paste with the color concentrates. Okay. So this one here was the white, which was here. I've just got it on black glass. Okay. And I tinted it with the color concentrates put it in the squeeze bottle and squeezed it on. So that's another type of outline that you can do. All right, so I'm gonna move these out of the way and then we're gonna talk, I'm gonna show you the examples. So what I did here was I piped on using the black low fire, no fire piping paste. So low fire meaning it's going on glass no fire, meaning you could put this on wood, plastic, 
ceramic, um, anything that you wanted to, it'll adhere. If it gets wet and stays wet, it can come off. But once it's dry, it's pretty hard, okay? Um, if you want to get it off and you've made a mistake, you can let it soak in water and then just use your tool and scratch it off, okay? So what I did was I pre-applied the paste is this one over here. This is the paste on this side. And this one over here is the outline. Now I think you can see already the difference in the coloring. Okay, can you see how this one over here is more gray? This one is blacker. Okay, so let's apply this one so that you can see that. So I keep a damp uh, paper towel. So I've just folded it and I dip this corner in water so that it's nice and damp and I can keep my tip free of any debris and keep it moist so it doesn't dry out on me. Okay, I've put the paste from here into here using my tool. And now I'm just gonna, and I, this is the white tip. We have a yellow, a pink, and then the black one is the one I have on the thinner liquid. Lay it on its side, so not over the top, okay? So see that it has a curve to it? So I'm not like this, I'm laying it on its side so that I can see what's gonna come out, okay? So you wanna be able to see what's coming out. Okay, and you want to touch your glass and you want that outline to be about the thickness of a pencil lead. Now you noticed I stopped because if I go this way, I'm gonna be scraping off what I'm putting on. So now I'm just gonna meet it back up. So when you're doing an outline, you're creating a dam to hold the color within. So it won't leak out, so to speak. Stop, restart and connect. Wipe that tip off, okay? So that is that one. And let me hold that up so you can, I don't know that you can see, I think you can kind of see that there. You can see that it's a raised surface. Okay, when you look at this one, it's very flat. See, you can hardly see anything. It's just barely on the surface. This one you can literally touch and you can feel it. You can see that it's raised. Okay. Miss Jenny has uh, linked up both of these products in the chat in case you want to um, click on that and read more. This is the outline, okay? This is the GO331, the outline. We have a white and a black. This is the one that you don't want to put between. And same thing applies. And I'm using the finer tip because it's a liquid, okay? hear that? I don't know if you can hear it. It's a pre-liquid, so it's very, very thin. If you used a large tip opening, it would just flood all over the place. Okay, so you wouldn't want to do that. And again, this is a curved surface, or excuse me, a curved tip. So I've laid it on its side versus on top, because if you're going like this, you literally are scraping off what you're putting on. When you're to the side, you're going to be able to see what comes out and see the difference in the thickness of the line. So it makes a difference what tip you're gonna use. Okay, let me put those back over there and wipe off my hand. Any questions, Jenny, before I go on about that? Okay. Hi, Helen, hi, Cheryl. Thanks for joining. Tracy, thanks for joining. Um, okay, so I think you can look at that and. Let me tip that so that maybe it won't have as much glare, but still a good lighting. Okay, so you can see that that one looks gray and this one is black. See the difference in that? Huge difference as far as the look. Can you put the paste between glass? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to this piece. This one um, is two pieces of glass. I've piped the outline on. Now, bubble art products have to be used between glass or they can be used on top. 
with the frit technique. That's a whole, we're not going to go into techniques. We're just going to talk about outlines. So this was piped all on the top. I flipped the same piece of glass over and I repiped it all on the bottom. So it's like a double outline almost because I wanted to make sure my lines, I could hold my color within an area. So this bubble art was painted and so was this one and this one and these all these little lines are on the back side. Yes, we have a question. Okay, so somebody wants to know, do I bend the tip? No, the tips come bent. Hey, Miss Susan McGarry, long time. I need a memo box <laughs> and a checkout to write what I'm using. Okay. Um, there is a, t there is a note box or the note section on the checkout, if that's what you're asking me. Okay. So no, these tips are bent. The uh, pink, where did I lay them? There they are. The pink and the yellow tips are not bent. Okay. It's just the way they come. These are the four that we sell in our set. Okay, so if you order the piping kit, you can order it in a one ounce or a half ounce bottle, and it comes with all four tips. If you've ordered the paste kits, you get the same thing. You get the bottles, the tips, the brushes, the tool. So there's different ways that you can purchase, okay? But I, what I want you to know is that the paste, okay, which is the darker one, can be used between glass. Okay, so this one was piped on the top. I flipped it over, piped on the bottom. And if I tilt this, you can kind of see a double line there because I've tilted it. If it's right overhead, then it just is right on top. But I did that so I can control where some of my color was between the glass. And then I put another piece of glass underneath it. Hopefully that makes sense. Do you blend the, oh, do you bend? Okay, we got that one. All right, does that make sense everyone, hopefully? Okay, so that's a use in between. Okay, here is one that this has got the paste as the outline. Okay, so this is the paste and this is on top. I've used different products, bubble art with some frit, uh, some little chips. Hi, Eileen. You love the dragonfly bowl. I'll have to bring that one to Vegas. I'll see you in less than a month. Um, we are going to the glass show in Las Vegas, the expo. So um, I'll be posting more about that in the next day or so. Okay. So this is on top. I did use two pieces of glass because I needed the volume. So it's a total of six millimeter. But that just shows you. And you can see that even the paste it's not a shiny, shiny black, and I'm not sure it will show, but it's um, it's shinier than, than what the outline, because that is a matte and it's a gray look. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Den um, posed a question that uh, when he used the outline black, he said it spread. My my question to you, Den, is which tip did you use? Did you use the black one? Because it is already liquid. It's very, very thin. Okay, so I would use the black. Very seldom do I use any other tip but the black one with the outline. Okay. Hello, Miss Jennifer. You like the butterfly? This is, I think that packet is, I taught this at retreat years and years ago. Um, it's probably on the website, but I don't remember what I called it, honestly. And look at this. I don't know if you guys can see underneath the little square chips. Do you see that squiggly line? That is actually, um, what do they call them? You know, the scrubbers, like the um, kitchen sink, the copper ones are the, Choi cup. I don't remember what they're called, but I did. I just took that and cut it up and put it underneath, and then I had color on there to help fuse everything together. So that's a fun little technique. So Din says yes, he did use the black tip. Yeah, just make sure that uh, you shake it well. Uh, maybe it just had too much of the liquid on the top. That could be for sure. 
Okay, here is another one that is, this is paste. And I think you can kind of see that texture when I tilt it there. So the paste does have a little bit of a texture. Now, I wouldn't put this on a bowl that was going to have soup because anything can get inside the texture. If it's decorative, you're good. Okay. And same thing goes with the outline black because of it being a matte finish. I wouldn't use it for anything that was going to hold liquid food. Okay. All right. So, okay. So Jenny has uh, posted the butterfly bowl uh, for a link. Okay. You can also use a silk screen as an outline. So this just happens to be a silk screen. I didn't put anything else with it, but you could come in and you could color in, uh, you know, different colors. So that's just another way to do an outline. Another outline would be stamping with the color concentrates okay so you can stamp with the black color concentrate and then you can color in this happens to be all color concentrates on this piece and then I sifted clear powdered frit over it so you can use your stamping for an outline okay you're trying to take notes, Nancy. Well, the good thing is you can go back and watch this. It's on YouTube and it's it, that's the easiest place to find it um, because it gets lost in my feed on my personal page. I, I know that for a fact. Here is your white outline on black glass. Okay, this is a video, this dotting, uh, using the dotting tool. And this is, um, Full fused, I believe I went to like 1450 with a five minute, 10 minute hold. And it's pretty shiny. It's not a matte finish. So it really depends on how hot you take it. And as long as it's shiny, it's food safe. Okay. So you've went hot enough that it changed that. Here's another one that uses the paste, basically similar to what I did here, outlined. And then I flooded in a color and I also uh, put on some frit. This is a plum, a excuse me, bubble art that I did in North Carolina as a project and put the frit on top of it just as an outline. So basically, this is your dam to keep your color inside. And I'm going to demonstrate a petal on both so that you can see it. Okay. Here's again, this is another one. This is a free project. If you go to the blog on the website, this is the fall dish. The video is there. I believe I put the pattern there too. Um, so that is all out there for you. You love the versatility of the CFE products. And my awesome ideas. Well, thank you, Eileen. I try. You, know, some, you guys are my motivator. Sometimes I, eh. I need help once in a while. I have been so busy and swamped. I, I, I'm ashamed to even show my fingers tonight because I've had cuts and blisters and cracks. Um, those of you from the clay share, you guys have kept me so busy. I have been bottling paint and just going insane. We just got 10,000 bottles in on some Saturday and uh, just in time. Okay, so this is just a porcelain, or excuse me, a ceramic cup from like Tuesday morning. It's already pre-glazed, but I used the same paste as an outline, as a technique. So, and then this was just um, set on thin fire paper and fired if you were in a ceramic kiln, 015, 016, or take it back to your um, minimum temperature of 1380, full fuse is recommended for all of our products. Okay, so that's another thing you can do with that same outline product. Now, those of you that are from the ceramic world, this one I taught, um, where did I teach this? Maybe in Vegas? I don't remember now. Anyway, Eileen might remember. Was this one of the classes I taught out there? This is a ceramic uh, plaque that is glazed with our matte medium, which is a matte glaze, our clear matte glaze. And then it had a raised, this was from Bisque Imports at the time, uh, a raised dimensional butterfly there. And I thought, okay, I'm going to use that to my advantage. And I just duplicated it over here. There's not one underneath it. I added the leaves. So this is the same paste 
and I've done it after the glaze was fired as an outline to hold my products within. And then I used clear frit on top of the color to cap it because I didn't want, I wanted the matte background. So it's a way you can create dimension on your pieces. See that? It's pretty crazy. And at the time, I don't remember. I just had a bunch of beads and I made that for it. So that's another fun one. Any questions in Vegas a few years? Okay. Um, they're trying to find the fall dish. It is on YouTube. I know that. I thought I had it on um, the blog also. It should be under the glass. But I can post it later if we need to. Okay. So I want to apply color to these so that you understand. Um, and don't forget, if you want to do a silk screen as an outline, we have a silk screen black and white. And I went to pull out this project and it got broken on the way home. So this is a silk screen that I did on top. Then I flipped the piece over and I did a three color blend, cerulean, light cerulean, cerulean, and deep cerulean. And this was on the back of the glass and it was touching the thin fire paper. And I don't know that the camera will show it, but it has a matte finish versus the shiny of the glass because it was face down on the firing paper. And then I did come back and I added some of the sparkle, silver sparkle on top. But that's the way you can use it as an outline and then just flip your piece over and paint on the back. Okay. Did you find it, Jenny? No? Okay. Okay, so this is um, the outline white used. And I believe this is, uh, if you look at the spring kit of the enamels at the bottom, it should have a link to this worksheet there. So the full instructions and pattern, if you wanted to replicate that, but you can see that it, it's a, a matte finish against the glossy when I hold it like that. So the petals are shiny, but the outline is a matte. That is the outline white. Okay. The outline white, the GO 330 on the top and then the colors filled in. And Shelly did a few of these for us many years ago. Okay. So I've mixed up two colors. I got tea rose and deep cranberry. The enamels are a powder form. Okay. So I took some of that and there's a lot of other videos. Um, and then I mixed it with the GM 300 glass medium. And these are just some little half ounce jars that we sell. Um, somebody asked me today about, um, they had some of the color that was pulling back on them. One of the things I want to tell you again is when you're using these plastic containers or pods or anything, and you start scraping the side to reconstitute it, what happens is you end up getting some of that plastic particle inside your color and you don't really see it. Uh, once in a great while, I did catch it on one piece. It almost looks like a clear piece of frit floating on the surface. Um, if that makes sense. So if you ever see that, don't use it because it's probably going to pull back or open up when it's fired. Okay. So try not to really scrape hard and I'm really bad about it. So I'm trying to only mix up what I want and I use it. Okay. And then I'm not going to go into the whole drip test or anything because that's all on another video. Okay. Just to save time. All right. So if I were doing these just to see the difference, I'm going to start with a two color blend. I'm going to just apply the T rose on the outside and I'm really, do you see how much is there? I just kind of scoop the color up and puddle it in and I start away from the piping and then I push it next to it because you want to tuck it underneath. If you don't get underneath, then what could happen is it could open up there would be an air pocket there and you may think it's pulled back, but what it did was just that air pocket opened up. I wipe off the excess 
on my container, pick up the darker color and start at the other end. And then Jenny, you tell me if we have any questions, okay? Okay. Okay, so Jennifer, she found that video on YouTube and posted it for you there, okay? So what you can do is after I flooded, I wiped off the excess of the deep cranberry and you can see it's starting to kind of merge. Let me zoom in a little bit further. I think it's starting to kind of merge, but what I like to do is just skim the top surface and create a blend. So you're creating like a third color in there. Then I will wipe on a paper towel to get rid of the excess and even go back into the pink and pull down, wipe, pink, pull down. So it just depends on what you're wanting. But when you go down into it, you've now got burgundy or the deep cranberry on the tip of the brush. So you've got to be careful because you're not going to remove it. You're just moving it around on the piece. But you can see how you can blend. So when you've got this on here, okay, so now you've got this dam that holds it in. Did I get a little bit on the black? Yes. But you can, when it dries, not necessarily right now, you can just take a damp brush and water and you can clean that up if it bothers you. It's going to come through pretty black when it fires. Okay. Okay, and we have a question. Yes. Okay, so Jennifer's asking when she floods on the colors that um, if she's too thin, you see through it. It's very translucent, which is correct. If And then too thick, you can get some of the pullback. And usually that pullback only happens in colors that have white in them. The titanium that's in the whites, uh, Jennifer, can be an issue. So just be careful on those colors, which would be like your lighter pinks. Um, some of the yellows. So keep that in mind. Okay. Hey, Miss Karen from New Zealand. Thanks for joining me. I think it's middle. Of, okay. I think it's uh, in the middle of the afternoon over there, maybe. Okay. So let's do it on the one that it has. So this one was the paste. This one has the outline black. So let's do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to flood that color on. Now, the problem is it's easier to go over the line because that line is not very thick. I mean, and if I get too much product on my brush. So Jennifer's question, how do you, what is the magic uh, consistency basically is what she's saying. Uh, if I get too thin, it's too translucent. If I get too thick, I have a problem with it pulling. Um, okay. If you, um, if it's say a white Jennifer or any of those colors that have white in them, what I tend to do is go a little thinner and then on the back side of that area, I will put a thin, literally brush coat of that same color, like my base color on the back. And that's kind of a cheater's way of doing it so that it um, makes it opaque. Also work on a light board. And you may already be working on a light board, but that helps me. Uh, I don't have one tonight because I had clay stuff all over from the last couple of weeks. So I did, all I did was pick up some of the uh, pink after I cleaned my brush and I can create. But every time you go across or go into one of the other colors, you're going to end up picking it up on your brush. So you need to just wipe that clean. So I didn't go over this one, but it's amazing. This one, I, I am, I'm going to be honest, I don't hardly ever use the black outline. I did in the very, very beginning back in 2006, 7, 8. Um, but once we got the paste, I like it because I can fuse it between glass and I don't have to worry about it. And I don't have to worry about my students flooding over the top of this one because it is so thin. And if I tip this to show you, it's going to run. 
okay? But it's extremely thin. You can't even hardly see it. Where this one is thicker, you can see the lines. And I started shifting my color. So the paste, this one here, you can put between glass. Okay, so this is between glass. Whoops, sorry, you can't see that. Let me zoom back out. So this one is your paste. This one is your outline. Okay. And you can kind of see it in the bottle. I mean, it's a gray color. I mean, yes, the bottle has a little bit of a um, natural tint to it, but you can tell that that is black compared to gray. Okay. So hopefully, Jennifer, that will help you in your application. Um, like I said, I'll just flip it over a lot of times and just paint a thin coat on the back. That is my cheater's way, especially if it's a white or a pink. And when I say paint on the back, what I mean is, so if it were the pink, I would come in behind and just quickly add a coat. It doesn't have to be flooded on. Or if it is, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it on there because you can see that part of that's transparent and part's opaque. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Uh, the other is the drip test. And I don't know. What, and we have a question. Yes. Okay. So Deb has a question about the ceramic. So Deb, this piece was bisque, 04 bisque. This is low fire earthenware. And I put four coats of our matte medium. So it's a clear matte glaze on Stilton fired to 06. And then I came in and I added my outline and I applied my bubble art enamels. And then I put clear coarse frit from slumpies on top of that. And then I stilted it. Don't turn it over because stuff can fall off. And there's other videos out there um, on the blog. There's a Christmas tray that I did. Um, actually, Jenny, there's a, if you look for Christmas box on the website, there's a Christmas one that I put Christmas candies and hollies that is a packet out there. I'm not sure if this packet is out there or not. I don't remember. I'm sure it is somewhere, but um, Christmas candies will get you to it so you can see it. So, and then that's Stilton fired to an 015, 016. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense, Deb, and definitely reach out because I know you're from the Clay Share Group. Um, if you want to try something like that, I'd be more than happy to help you. Okay. All right. So th the difference, this just works better for me as far as having a student do it. It's a raised outline and it's just easier to stay within. I personally don't like the gray coloring of this guy the outline black so i don't use it hardly at all i like to stamp with the color concentrates and fill in that's a great outline now you're going to say well can i use the color concentrates to with a detail brush i wouldn't because what happens is it's not going to be let me grab some here it's not going to be time you you're you're for one thing if you're brushing it on it's very translucent okay so trying to get a solid outline and then it's going to be super heavy and it's just not i don't like it at all now you could use a quill pen okay and you could apply an outline absolutely and did i bring an example of that well, this is the designers. Okay, this is all done with a quill pen. So you can out, it has to be capped and fused between. So this is done with the quill and the designers, which is a non enamel product. And anytime I put another piece of glass over any of our products, I sift clear powdered frit between the layers and then I sift around the edge another time. Okay, that's going to help eliminate the bubbles. Will I go over, say that again? Is Brenda, um, as long as it's not liquid food, yes. 
um, because there is texture left on, well, this one, if it's not capped, there's texture. So I wouldn't use it on anything that's going to have a liquid food in it. Okay. If you're using the paste and it's on top, you're going to have a little bit of a texture. Same thing, not for liquid candy, cookies, sandwiches, that kind of stuff. But technically to be food safe, you're going to have to go between glass. Okay. Hopefully that answers that. Hi, Lynn and Ron. Okay, so I know a bunch of you have liked this one. Let me zoom back out. So this is the same. This has got the piping paste on the top. And did I, I don't think I did it on the bottom of this one. I just flipped it over and only put the bubble art on the backside of the one piece of glass. But see how this has got silver sparkle and there's texture because the sparkles are not technically food safe unless you mix them with another color. Now here I marbleized with the same blue. So I took these two colors and marbleized. And this is a download. I actually have a, a video uh, download that you can do on this one or just the pattern. And tonight we're actually going to give out the pattern on this one which has both of those bowls in it, the small one and the larger one. But this is a fun, and then this is, of course, this is not food safe because of the texture. But like I said, if it's decorative or you've got wrapped candies or just something, you can always put a doily over it or even a clear glass plate over the top. This is backed with white glass. And Jenny is so good. She has got that link up for you in case you wanted this. So I did a Zoom class on this and then made it downloadable. Hello from Georgia. So excited to learn this technique. Well, hi, Sheila. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, the dragonflies are really fun. It was one of my favorite ones that I've done. And then there's the small bowl. So you get both of these in that packet. Okay. And then this has got a frit technique using, actually, this is using the layering mix and coarse frit. I applied it in the area and then... We talked about that on one of the other ones. And then I just took it more to attack fuse. And then I came, before I fired it, I used the opal ice uh, glitz on top of it. So it's actually got a little bit of a shimmer to it. So it's like a glitter almost. And that's the glitz on top of there. I'm running out of space. All right. Any other questions? I'll show you one more outline. So... We, the silk screen products you can I showed you how you could screen on remember my broken piece so you can screen it on and then paint on the back okay. you can also use the quill pen with the silk screens okay so this is all done with the quill pen and the silk screen white and I did mix this one with clove oil versus the GM 300 glass medium the clove oil allows it to kind of pull and make a little bit of a fatter area here. And then you can pull it into the tips. It takes longer to dry. And this is a video. Um, it has this on the front of it, Jenny. It's a YouTube video. I did it in a black and a white on a square piece, but I put this picture on the, the YouTube. Thank you, Patty. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Helen. So that's another way that you can outline. So you could fire that on and you can come. So if you're wanting a finer detail, you can do that with the quill pen. So now I've confused you on what to use, right? Because I've showed you so many different things. So there's a lot of, it just really depends on the look that you want. Okay. The look that you want. All right. Any other questions? See how this has a little bit of a, a, a texture. This is the paste. And Jenny posted the link to this one. So this is all the glass enamels. Where this is stamping with the color concentrates, filling in with the concentrates. And I had to sift clear powdered frit over this because concentrates are a matte finish. And they are a non-enamel. They're a ceramic translucent underglaze. So it had to have frit over the top of it to make it food safe. 
Now, what happens when you use these as an outline with the quill pen or a stamp, you can still get a little bit of a texture and I'm not sure I can get it to show on the camera. There it is a little bit up there on that one. So you may have to sift over it, fuse it again a second time to get rid of any texture. Only where it's heavier is where you usually see that. But this is like a coaster, so it didn't really make any difference. All right. Any last questions? I didn't want to take up a whole lot of time tonight, but hopefully um, that shows you and helps you, you know, determine what you want to use when you're trying to decide. I tend to use the paste most often. That is my go-to. Okay. Um, it's just something that I do. Okay. So let me come back on here. Does that make sense, everyone? Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Deb. Any last questions? I didn't want to take up a whole lot of time. I got to get back to bottle and paint um, with my poor fingers that are bleeding and cracked and everything. It's uh, you guys have kept me busy. And if you're from the clay share group, um, just know that I am working seven days a week, 12 to 14 hours a day, trying to get your orders filled. Um, and we're getting there. I'm hoping by Monday, we should be finished with everything is my goal. So be patient. We're small, family owned, and uh, uh, we're doing, wearing many hats, so to speak. Will you be giving instructions on the quill pen? Brenda, I did, um, I've got multiple videos out there on the quill pen. So go check out the one that's the silk screen one with the silk screen white. It's got that blue bowl. I think Jenny posted that one. Um, that shows it. There's one using the designers also. I'm going to switch to, I'm going to turn that mic on, hide this. Okay. Hopefully you can still hear me. Okay. Um, hopefully that helps, but there's lots of videos, Deb or Brenda, excuse me, um, out there on the quill pen and look at the stamping one that, I believe I had it in that one along with the stamping and application and everything. Yes, Robin, it is a good business. I just wish I could get some sleep. <laughs> um, anyway, okay, don't forget to take a breath. Yeah, well, that would be nice. I was just telling Jenny um, before we started, I did not even know it was daylight savings time. I woke up Sunday morning. <laughs> I was like, why is my clock say one thing different than my phone and I have not watched any TV. I was bottling till 1030 last night out there. And like I said, my fingers are raw and bleeding and awful, but Sheila, you got your package. Can't wait. I am looking really forward to seeing what you guys do with the product. Please post, tag me. Um, if I'm not in that group, I can't do anything but like it. I can't, and you know, comment on it. I had somebody do that on a group that I wasn't on. So uh, just know that I'll try to see it if I'm able to see it. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, let's give away. We're, Jenny's going to uh, spin. We're going to give a couple of glass packets away. The one is the Dragonfly packet, and that is valued at $24.95. Um, if you'd rather have the PDF sent to you, I can do that, or I'll send you the hard copy, whichever. And so Jenny's going to tell us who wins that one. Well, Deb Gardner, you are the winner. Awesome. I think I already sent your package, didn't I? I think so, but I'll send you that. Let me know. Uh, I'll look and see. Okay, then the next one is um, a holiday piece. This is a, a gift tray, two different ones. I did this at retreat. Um, it's using some glass on glass, some marbleizing, some glitz, sparkle, different things. So that one is a $12.50 value. Okay, and Jenny will spin the wheel, so to speak, for that one. She is. That's okay. She's, <laughs> she's trying. You guys can't hear her, but she is working. <laughs> hey, Misty. How's it in Florida? Sandy Dillon, you are the winner of the holiday glass gift tray packet. Okay. So if you're um, placing an order or anything, let me know and I'll ship it with that. 
If not, I will get it out. Uh, usually takes me a week. Uh, so let me know. Okay. All right, guys, thanks for joining me and I will see you next week and we'll probably go back to ceramic clay stuff and do a refresher on that. Okay. All right, guys, have a good evening and happy painting. See you soon.